Hi everybody, welcome to day four of theCUBE's coverage of RSA 2024. Day four, we have been going wall to wall, we've been talking to CISOs, practitioners, executives, leaders in the industry, technologists, and we're really excited to have Abby Strong here, she's the Chief Market Officer for Cribble. Cribble is unmissable, <laughs> and uh, great to see you it's on theCUBE. It's great to see you too, and I, I agree, it feels like day four with my voice too, so. I, I lost my voice time. in day one, so yeah. it's uh, good. <laughs> so, how's the show going for you guys? So well, I, I'm, I love this show. I mean, and it's so nice to see it back in full force. Like, there's no room anywhere, there's no, you know, uh, standing line only um, it, at all of the booths and things, and so it's been really exciting. Yeah, it's good, so you guys have had a lot of momentum in the marketplace. Yeah. Tell us, What's that tailwind for you? What's driving that? You know, I think it's really our relentless focus on our customers and the problems that they have and how we can help solve them. Um, and uh, what we've learned early is that providing that value to our customers, um, it, it, it translates into business for us too. But you know, so there's relentless focus, yes, but you also have to have great products. Yes, right. we do. Because you can have great focus, but if you don't have great products, you won't get that tailwind. You guys have tons of announcements this week. We'll just go through a, a couple of them quickly and then we maybe we can pick up on them. Yeah. You got this deal with Microsoft on data management. You got yep. the Wiz integration program, which was some big news here. You got stuff going on with AWS. Um, you got the Splunk lawsuit that you won. That was back in April, so good. congratulations on getting that deal done. Uh, and then you had the, uh, the, the, the Cribble Lake. You also announced, uh, I guess today or yesterday, a deal with Deloitte. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is also big news, getting the GSIs involved. Well, you know, ultimately you're describing what we, so at, at our heart, we're an integrations company, mm -hmm. and we so firmly believe that customer data is their data. And so whatever tool they want to put it in that makes sense for them, whatever choices they've made in the past, and whatever choices they want to make in the future, they should be enabled to do that. And that's what our products really work together to solve for them, is that choice control and flexibility over their data. I think people sometimes get confused, maybe you can help us sort of clarify it, kind of your role where you sit in this sort of agnostic middle and you're feeding other tooling and, yep. um, and you're really good at that, but you describe that a little bit. Sure, so this is what we mean by a data engine built specifically for IT and security data and the problems that those personas face. And uh, one of the things that, um, that we're really focused on is this, the fact that data is growing at 28% uh, year over year, uh, but we haven't yet found a customer who told us that their budget is growing at that rate. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so what we've done is build a set of products that allow them to uh, you know, just decouple where they're collecting all of that data from and then all of the tooling where they may want to send that data in the future and then giving them the ability to really pick and choose like what data makes sense in, in my SIM? What data should be you know, sent to like, some sort of low cost object store? How do, you know, how do I want to interact with all of the different teams that may have you know, different use cases that they're trying to solve with different tools? And then we make it possible for them not only to get the data where they want it or collect it from any of the places that they have it, uh, but then store it cheaply if they need help with that. That's the lake announcement you were talking about. And then search is our federated search across all these tools. Because now, yeah. if they've got seven and nine tools in their environment, one of the big problems that they have is that now they have to teach people how to use seven right. and nine tools and go find all that data. So search helps them access it once isn't, they get it there. Isn't it amazing yeah. how search has it became this like really killer enterprise use case, like the killer app yeah. is search. It is <laughs> amazing, and, and you know, the number one use case that they're solving right now is they want to put that all that data into something lower cost than a, than a SIM right away because there's a lot of it that, that will never get searched again, but they have to keep it for compliance reasons right. or the what if scenarios. And so the search, being able to, to search data that it has never seen before, did not ingest, is in whatever format it came in on, um, right from the object store without moving it, is uh, our customers are just loving it. A lot, of, a lot of customers tell us they'd love to get rid of their SIM, but they can't because of the compliance reasons, but, but there's next gen SIM that actually adds value beyond I have to do it. You know, it brings business value that's incremental. I think so compliance. too. I mean, we see that with the, you know, there was a lot of talk of XDR a couple of years back, and I think we're seeing some transition from XDR to next gen SIM, but yeah. ultimately trying to give folks more visibility and, and more detections and, and just 
easier ways to, to figure out, is something going on that shouldn't be? You know, I have a question. We were talking about this briefly before we hopped on here, but you know, um, the concept of consolidation and convergence of tools and that sort of thing, and, and I think that you're seeing that happen. I love the story that you shared, and I'm going to ask you to share it again, the story about the sim, the seven sims. Oh yeah, I was, <laughs> but, I was yeah. talking to a customer this week, and they was telling me that uh, they have seven different sim solutions in their environment, some of them through M&A, uh, reasons, but a lot of it was just because there's different teams with different motivations and you know they're working and they like a tool and they're starting to build a workflow right. on top of it. So I know there's a lot of talk of consolidation of tooling, but we have yet to see it and our yeah. Our research also shows us seven and nine tools in any one customer well, environment. And I think that Abby might be the first person who's said to us that she hasn't seen it happening. The first I mean, vendor. The, the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, the first vendor. No, that's it, that's the point, is that Appreciate we've had honesty. lots yeah. of conversations <laughs> with vendors who've said, oh yeah, everybody's moving to the platform and all that sort of thing, and I, I understand, of course, that's the goal, but we're just not seeing that, our research isn't showing that yet, so it's interesting to hear. I'm glad we're aligned on that. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a, I think it is, you know, ultimately, of course, vendors want you to consolidate what you're going to put Absolutely. into their environment, and it makes not only their, um, you know, their uh, potential uh, revenue from a customer bigger, but also makes their solutions better if they get all of the data into one place. But it is uh, it is absolutely not what we're hearing yeah. from one, customers. Is why we're so agnostic. You know, one practitioner said, because trying to understand, okay, why? Why is that? And they they tell us they have to you know plug holes. They need best of breed. But I thought one summed it up very well. She said that the innovation is happening faster than the consolidation. Like. Yep, there you it go. Makes total sense, so. yeah. yeah. So, so you guys have, oh, go ahead, please. I was just going to say, that I think best of breed is still a thing, and people get really excited about something that solves a problem. Yeah. Well, so. that's, that's, that's good for you guys. Yeah, right? absolutely. So you have sort of IT peeps, and you have security peeps. Help us understand how you serve each of those, how your products uh, support each of those. That's folks. a great question. So we did try, I'll say for the, you know, I've been at Cribble, all but four years now, and we did try to say, you know, observability is the, the you know, sort of the umbrella category above IT and security. Mm -hmm. But honestly, just like you might have heard vendors saying, we're going to consolidate everything into us, the same problem here is that we found that our IT audience, uh, they do deeply resonate with the observability uh, moniker, but the security folks do not yet, mm -hmm. and so, but, what we have found is that they do share a lot of tooling and they do sh uh, share about 70% of the data that they need in those tools. Um, and so ultimately what we're really focused on is making sure that we're very clear that we solve both IT and security problems um, by helping folks figure out what to do with their data and then help them access it later. And um, But it is exclusively focused on those IT and security professionals. Uh, I like to say we're not we're not the, the company that's thinking about you know, all the data scientists and all the business folks who tell me how many licenses I sold. They're amazing and I need them every day. But our folks are like, you know, sort of the grizzly haired IT guy down in the basement keeping your email <laughs> operational. I'm sure, probably haven't thanked him lately, I would recommend doing so, but that is, uh, that's who we're building our products for. And, um, and then the security professionals that are keeping us all safe and hopefully compliant as we move forward. It, and if I understand it correctly, you're coming at it as a data problem. Yes. You start with the data and they can do with it what they will sort of thing. You're not trying to force them to, to, to to start talking to each other. Right? So. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, it, all security and IT uh, comes down to data. Like, yeah. what, what decisions are you going to make? How are you going to make um, the, the you know, meet your compliance requirements, mitigate risk, all of these things come down to what can I see so that I know what's going on in my environment. And so we want to be the experts in that type of data and then let the experts in security build the, the solutions that are doing those detections and, and responses, um, as well as the folks who are building all of the IT tooling to you know, think about how they're going to build those solutions out too. Do you do you see IT people at this show, or is it like 90% security folks? It's it's 90% yeah, security folks, a lot of CISOs here yeah. um, and their yeah. teams, but uh, but I'd say, yeah, I think IT, there's other shows that we go to to, to more uh, connect with the IT audience. Yeah, so I haven't, you know, I haven't seen a ton of CIOs here, I think I saw one this yeah. week. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe I'm just missing the boat here. So how is the conversation different when you're talking to a, a security pro versus an IT pro? 
honestly, it's not that different. It's the same, it's not that right? Yeah. 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 That's the funny thing. Yeah. So yeah. your premise was actually pretty logical. It's yeah. just, you know, you're not going to keep banging your head against the wall if it's not the right, you know, messaging. So, I mean, that's literally <laughs> my job from a marketing perspective <laughs> yeah. is to make sure that we, we find the message that resonates yeah. with the audience. Sure. Yeah. So what's resonating with the security pros? The security, well, I think a lot of them are, are really focused on how are they going to mitigate risk and, and meet all of the compliance requirements in front of them right now. And so ultimately, how long do they have to store data? Where are they going to put it? How do they make sure that they're protecting you know, PII and, and the proliferation of, of data throughout the enterprises? And so um, a lot of our conversations there are how can we enable them to get the information they need and not blow their budgets because even security who is actually generally better funded than the IT audience, yeah. uh, they're still not, um, they're not growing at 28% year over year either. Indeed. Yeah, our data suggests that the overall market's probably growing three, let's call it three and a half percent. Security's probably at least double, yeah. I'd say more closer to triple that yeah. in terms of budgets. But it's not 28%. And we point. still, and we think 28% is pretty conservative for what we're starting to see because there's always more data, right? Like there's, it's not even just what you have already that's growing at 28% year over year, but it's all the new sources that keep showing up and yeah. folks haven't even figured out how to ingest yet into their tools. It's, it's a hard thing to measure actually, if somebody who used to measure like storage growth. It's, it could be very well double that, you know, over 50%. Yeah. yeah. Random. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, like the hyperscalers and, um, and you know, all of the, um, the folks still selling hard drives and, and you know, <laughs> big iron would like us not to think about that too much so that we can keep uh, investing there <laughs> as well. So I know that you have a technology alliance program. Would you talk a little bit about what's involved there and why it's important? It is so important. So at our heart, I mentioned this earlier, but we are an integrations company. We yeah. want customers to be able to make the choices that they want for their data. And so alliances are the way that we make sure that we, we have a, a path for them to yeah. put their data wherever they may want it and, and of course get it back in the future. And so super excited, as you mentioned, to announce our partnerships with Microsoft and Wiz and Deloitte this week, um, Amazon a couple weeks back. Uh, again, we've, we've been working with all of these vendors for a long time, but we have over 70 different uh, integrations that you can mix and match with all of our solutions. Um, and it's just, it's so much fun being able to say, yes, we can do that too. Yeah, so that's nice. So Cisco announced like an XDR SIM kind of integration. So what does that mean for your relationship with Splunk, given that the, you won the, 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 the court, the, the trial, so what does I mean, that mean? that's a big word. You know, we're still yeah. waiting for final thing, but Well, I think it was a favorable, you're yes, right. It's yeah. a favorable, sorry, I don't mean to jinx you. That's okay. I'm a little superstitious, <laughs> I'll knock wood there. Yeah. So, yeah, but. You know, we were really pleased with the outcome of, you know, of the litigation that you're referencing. Uh, having, you know, one, a win for the industry to say that it is fair use uh, when you're doing interoperability testing, especially for companies like ours that are focused on integrations, that was huge. And um, you know, we were pretty pleased that uh, you know ultimately, even though um, we we will make some changes internally, that a dollar was not you know the worst possible outcome for us. So uh, <laughs> so I think that, that um, you know we're happy about that. But our customers love Splunk. We share a lot of customers in common. It is still one of the most common uh, you know tools out there for IT and security audiences. And uh, I'd love to see us partner again because we know our, our customers would love that too. Yeah, I mean, look at Cisco is generally speaking a pretty open company and yeah. I think they understand that you meet customers where they are, so and they've got a pretty good ecosystem, so I don't, I don't see why that relationship has to end for any reason. Unless, you know, you're not, it's not like you're going nan 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 nan. No, not at all. <laughs> You'll be very respectful and yeah. you focus on the customers and bring in yeah. value. So good, good luck with that. I hope, Thank you. I yeah. hope for your customers and their customers' sake that that, that continues, because you're right, customers do love Splunk. And yeah. we, I mean, of course we'd love to work with Cisco. That's you know, a major player and I'm, always been such an icon in the industry, so. Yeah, indeed, G2 Welcome. Patel was here yesterday, and again, he's very open to partnerships, understands that, you know, they, they want to be a platform company, right? Yeah. Everybody wants to be a platform company. You can't be a platform company without partners, so. Yeah. Is that, so, we'll, we'll keep the doors open and hope that, uh, you know, maybe some more customer influence will, will help us yeah, as well. Good. Yeah, good, that's, that's the right attitude. So what's next for you guys? Well, we have our CribbleCon user conference coming yes. up in mm -hmm. June. I'm really excited about that. Um, and so, uh, really, 
you know, that opportunity to connect with them and, and show them not only do we commit to building things, but we actually deliver them at high quality, as you said earlier. And uh, and um, and I, you know, all the announcements that'll come out there about our, our next uh, innovations that we're going to drive to this year. Give a little, another little plug for the conference. So it's in June. It's in it's June 10th in, it's in Las Vegas. In Vegas right? um, where, where that's Caesars. Caesars. And uh, okay. yeah, it only costs a dollar. So <laughs> come join us. <laughs> oh, awesome. no kidding! I didn't know that. It's a it's a dollar registration fee. A dollar registration fee. Oh, good yeah, for you. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's it's more great. important to us to get in front of customers than it is to make money <laughs> from a conference. So yeah, we we want we would love for them to join. Yeah, I just don't hear that very clever. often. No, Never. That's really awesome. <laughs> okay. That's really well, awesome. Congratulations on the momentum and, uh, and all the announcements this week and, and the progress. We love Cribble. Fed Clint on you know, a couple times and uh, love, love seeing you guys and the best yeah. is yet to come. So yeah. It is. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, we really enjoyed working with you all and uh, can't wait to see you at the next show. Yeah, ditto. Appreciate the support. Thanks, yeah. Abby. Thank you. All right, keep it right there. Shelly and I will be back. Shelly Kramer, Dave Vellante, live from theCUBE's coverage of RSC 2024. Keep it right there.